Greetings everyone. This is Sayyid Reza Mashhadi and I'm going to start session number six of electrical resistivity tomography ERT from zero to hero. In this session I'm going to talk about understanding inversion procedure for resistivity or IP data. Before we start, I want to mention that I am not going to the details of mathematics of the inversion or inverse modeling. Instead, I'm going to describe a very simplistic overview uh, of the inversion procedure, which will be useful for the people who are not familiar with the mathematics of inversion. Uh, but uh, the people who are going to use the REST 2D in or REST 3D in software. If you're working with resistivity and IP data, this is a fundamental question to ask yourself. What is the procedure of resistivity or IP data inversion? If you have an idea about the procedure of inversion, then you will be capable of understanding a lot of uh, the things that software provides you and it will be very important especially if you're working with highly noisy data sets uh, that uh, you might you may encounter complexities in uh, inverting those data sets so it is a very important concept to have uh, uh, some idea about before we start again I want to make sure that you have checked the previous sessions on ERT playlist in this YouTube channel, especially the session number five, which we have discussed forward or inverse modeling. In fact, forward and inverse modeling uh, in geophysics. And uh, in fact, we also had a very uh, detailed discussion about the uh, you know about working with REST 2D mod software. Uh, which is uh, used for forward modeling of resistivity data in two dimensions. So feel free to check it out as well and other videos in the playlist. And now the best possible start would be the Dr. Kluck course notes that are available in the link below. I will provide the link in the description of the video for you to access this file, which is free to download. Uh, and I'm going to read this short text with you together to be able to have a solid mind when we're going to discuss about the inversion. In geophysical inversion, we seek to find a model that gives a response that is similar to the actual measured values. We want to find a model. But what is a model? A model is an idealized mathematical representation of a section of the Earth. And each model has a set of model parameters that are physical quantities we want to estimate from the observed data. And the observed data, in fact, is what we have measured in the field. The model response is the synthetic data that can be calculated from the mathematical relationships defining the model for a given set of model parameters. So very easy stuff so far. And all of the inversion methods are trying, in fact, to determine a model. You know, our goal is to find a model. And we want to find a model of the subsurface whose response agrees with the measured data in the field. Uh, and for sure, we have some restrictions and we have uh, the results within some acceptable limits. REST 2D INF and REST 3D INF programs are based on cell based inversion methods. We have cell parameters. So, before to be able to do the modeling, we have to, you know, uh, define mesh parameters. So, in these programs, the model parameters are the resistivity values of the model cells while the data is the measured apparent resistivity value. Okay? So if you're working with IP or chargeability values, the model parameters would be the chargeability values of the model cells 
while the data will be the measured apparent chargeability values. Okay, the mathematical link between the model parameters and the model response for 2D or 3D SVD model is provided by finite difference or finite element methods. So, I don't want to go to the details of the mathematics of inversion. In the next slide, I'm going to briefly describe what is happening in the inversion uh, in REST 2D or REST 3D in softwares. And most of other, you know, softwares that are working with cell-based methods. So these are some basic concepts that are that are applied to many geophysical inversion methods as well. So as we've discussed, we, we have to do finite element or finite difference modeling. And to be able to uh, do the modeling, we have to define mesh parameters. Or we have to do model discretization in the first step. So before going into the inversion procedure, uh, and it may be, you know, the inversion or something that is, you know, the automatic uh, calculation of the forward models, if we say, we need to discretize the model into a number of cells appropriately and how we define these uh, discretization in the software, in fact, in each direction, we div uh, divide the cells, uh, you know, in uniform uh, cell sizes that are called unit electrode spacing, which is a very important parameter to define while you're, in fact, uh, doing uh, in the inversion for your data for your data set. And we have also some vertical cell sizes in that direction. The cell sizes in that direction are not the same, and they increase towards depths. So we have the first layer thickness and then the subsequent layers uh, thickness in fact increases with a factor and in fact with our relatively arbitrary factor that is usually defined as 1.05 to 1.3 depending on your in fact the number of the measurements and the situation of your data set that is available to you. And the cell size of the first layer in that direction is usually set as uh, an error is usually considered as the ratio of the first uh, is the is a ratio of the unit electrode spacing usually it is considered to be half of the unit electrode spacing most of the time but it, this this is not you know very strict rule in some cases we have to change it or we can change it uh, to have a better model so as the first step we have model discretization okay we have talked how we discretize the model in the x and y directions, then we have something like this. But to incorporate the topography into our model, we have to shift the nodes or move the, um, the nodes of the, the cells in that direction. And also we do not use uh, absolute elevation values, we use the trend removal values. And uh, to be able to, you know, have a better and more realistic inversion usually the uh, in fact the movement of the nodes in that direction are not the same and because in for example in the valleys we have less uh, depth, depth of investigation and in, in the places we have high topographic reliefs we have uh, like you know i don't know a summit for example or uh, at dawn, for example, we have usually higher depths of investigation. So we transform uh, the, you know, we use some transformations and we have usually some distortion options that is available in the software. Now we have uh, the inversion in one slide and uh, this is a very simple explanation about the inversion. As you remember, the inversion is an automatic automated iterative process so the inversion is you know an automated and iterative process after that we have defined the, the uh, you know the mesh parameters or we have discretized the model into a number of cells we have to guess some initial values for the model parameters 
uh, you know, resistivity or IP, whether you're inverting your resistivity or IP data. And uh, when you have these initial models, to get them, and the initial model is usually taken as the mean values of measured apparent resistivity or apparent chargeability values in the whole of the profile if you're working with 2D data sets, okay? And then these, the uh, model response will be calculated based on the mathematical relationships. And thereafter, we compare the model responses with field measurements. This comparing will give us uh, an idea about uh, the suitability of our data fitting and we'll have uh, the error. So we'll check this error. Uh, and if this error is acceptable, uh, the inversion will be stopped. Otherwise, the inversion continues. And most of the time, in the first time that we are achieving this uh, you know, level, the inversion is not definitely stopped and the result is not acceptable. So we uh, have, uh, we will change the model parameters in a way to achieve a better fit or in a way to, to decrease the model, model to, to, to decrease the error. And how we do that, we use a Jacobian matrix and I don't, I don't want to go to the details, but if you want to have a better idea, you will go to the doc, uh, you know, Dr. Luke course notes that are available. Then we have, we'll have a new model, and this new model uh, will be also uh, calculated. Uh, the response of this new model will be calculated again, and then the comparison will occur. And in this step, we have, in fact, we are repeating this cycle, and each cycle is called an iteration. And when we receive here, for the first iteration, uh, we will have a model, and we will have a mar RMS error, or root mean square error. Then we will continue this process until the time that the results are acceptable, or until the time that we don't, uh, you know, uh, we reach uh, a situation in the inversion must be stopped. So sometimes working with noisy data sets and that uh, the iterations will not provide us a good model. Uh, the, you know, the RMS error would not be in an acceptable range, but the inversion stopping criteria stops the process. And when the process is stopped, the suitable model will be selected from the, uh, the suitable iteration number and the results will be exported and used for final interpretations. So with this brief explanation, now you have an idea about the uh, inversion procedure. And uh, I think I have discussed in uh, one of the videos uh, that uh, we are, n n you know, necessarily the last iteration is not the best choice for uh, the final model. And I hope that this simple explanation would give you uh, a good idea about what is happening in the inversion and what is happening behind behind the software. Uh, in fact, code to be able to uh, understand on the uh, options that are available and the parameters that are shown in the software. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe uh, if you want to join our small geoscientific community. And if you have any friends that might be interested in these kind of concepts, please share this video with your friends. Thank you and have a nice day.